Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing good today. Welcome back to my channel, Trick or Treat with Mathematics. So that, as the title suggested, today we will be seeing in depth about Euclid's division lemma along with examples. So this is a topic that is covered in chapter 1 of 10th class maths that is real numbers. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right into the video. So Euclid's division lemma is a restatement of a long division process that is nothing but it is a fancy name for our division that we usually do to solve problems so that means whatever division method that we use the long division method that we use to divide say for example 47 by 8 is the basic concept of euclid's division lemma but before that you need to understand the difference between lemma and algorithm so there are two things here one is euclid's division lemma and one is euclid's division algorithm so in this video we will encounter euclid's division lemma in the next video we will see euclid's division algorithm these two are different a lemma is a theorem as in it is a proven statement that is used to prove another statement. Lemma means a proven statement that is used to you prove another statement. But algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure that we follow so that we'll get one expected or desired result. In order to prove the expected or desired result, we need to have well-defined steps that we need to follow. That is the algorithm. If I ask you what happens when we divide 47 by 8, or some other number 96 by 5 what is the result that you get let us see that so I am trying to divide 96 by 5 now how do you divide this if I give you this how do you divide this you will just say it's 5 divided by 96 and this multiple of 5 that is nearest to 96 so then we can divide this very quickly so what is this 5 ones are 5 and we get here as 46 so 5 nines are 45 and this remainder is 1 so that means this shows that when you multiply 19 by 5 you will get 95 as the result which is the nearest possible value to 96 that is divisible by 5 right so can we call this as quotient? You must be already knowing that. This is the quotient and this is the remainder. This is the divisor and this is the dividend. Okay, so we, what are we doing here? We are considering two positive integers here and we are dividing them such that they will result in two more integers that is question and remainder right and this is the same method that you use to divide any other numbers for that matter however there is one observation that you usually tend to miss without you knowing it that is whenever you get the remainder right whenever if you divide any number for that matter say for example i want to divide 29 by 6 so we know for a fact that 6 4 is 24 and we get 5 as remainder. So in these both cases, you always see that the remainder is less than the divisor. Am I right or wrong? It cannot be equal to also. If it were 6 here, we would have definitely written as 4. 6 1s are 6 and we would have closed it. But this is not the case here. The remainder is always less than the divisor. The remainder is R and the divisor is D. Then you can see d or b we will take it as b then you can say that r is always less than b am i right and can the remainder be zero it's a question that i ask you of course it can be what happens if i divide 60 and 10 what is 60 by 10 you get the answer as 6 and this answer is the question so what is the remainder here what is the remainder when you divide 60 and 10? You get it as 0. That means the remainder can be 0. 
that's it can i write this condition now and you you grab a paper and prove all these yourself take random numbers and try to apply this condition to all of them without even knowing this condition this condition is still holds true for all the divisions that you do this is nothing but euclid's division lemma so let me give you another good example again in the form of a problem statement so the problem statement is as follows so i will give you 73 pens okay and i will ask you to put these 73 pens in pencil boxes okay and i will also give you a condition that each pencil box will hold only seven pens okay so 73 pens and each pencil box will hold seven pens how many pencil boxes are needed that means in short we need to find what happens when we divide 73 by 7 in order to get the number of pencil boxes and here these are the total number of pens available with you and this is the capacity of each box so what happens when you divide 73 by 7 you know that 7 tens are 70 and you get 3 as remainder so this is the remainder and this is the quotient right so that means we can divide 73 pens in 10 pencil boxes which has the capacity of 7 but we have 3 pens left out and in this case also if you apply this condition that is 0 less than or equal to r less than b it still holds true and here 0 is r is 3 and b is 7 this is exactly the theorem or the lemma in here i have written what exactly this lemma means so let a and b be any two positive integers that is whatever i have told you a here can be dividend and b is the divisor and we have considered this as any two positive integers remember this lemma can be extended to all the integers for that matter okay however we need to make sure that the divisor is not zero because we all know what happens when you divide a number by zero i will link the video up here so that you can also have a look at what happens when we divide a number by zero we know that whenever we divide a number by zero we will get the value as undefined so that is the reason whenever you are taking or extending this lemma to any all integers for that matter then we need to make sure that if b is the divisor then b should not be equal to zero okay so let's deal with this in a few seconds but let a and b be any two positive integers then there exists unique integers unique integers q and r and here q is the question r is the remainder and these are definitely unique because you can divide a particular number by the divisor and it gives you a unique question it will not give you multiple questions right so these are unique integers such that a is equal to bq plus r that is dividend is equal to divisor into question plus remainder if you consider a as the dividend b as the divider q as the question and r as the remainder then dividend is equal to divisor into question plus remainder is this that is a is equal to bq plus r whereas the condition is 0 is less than or equal to r less than b this is what i was trying to prove in the lecture before okay so this is the euclid's division lemma i've told you that this extends to all the integers so what happens when we consider this applicable for all the integers this is this still holds the same and we know for a fact that b should not be equal to zero for all the integers 
right so then what will happen we will be getting a is equal to bq plus r as is and the condition will be mod b this b is negative it will be positive in this condition because of the modulus okay so this is the concept of euclid's division lemma let's see the applications of euclid's division lemma so the first question is in here show that every positive even integer is of the form 2q and that every positive odd integer is of the form 2q plus 1 where q is some integer so how do you prove the statement using euclid's division lemma let's see here we need to consider an integer a common integer that is let's say a b a positive integer we need to prove that that integer is of the form 2q when the number is even and that integer is of the form 2q plus 1 when the number is odd so when we say a is some integer and you and consider b as the divisor here okay and you know for a fact but by using euclid's division lemma you know that a is equal to bq plus r and you know that 0 is less than or equal to r less than b right and it is asking positive so we will just deal with positive in this question they have given you a hint here they have given you that this integer should be of the form 2q or 2q plus 1 that means can we not consider this 2 as divisor because if we consider a as the integer then it should be in the form of 2q why q because he said q is some integer so we take this as q only here so 2q plus 0 2q plus 1 right so here he has given 2q and 2q plus 1 where we can consider b as 2 okay so in that case what will happen is when you say b is 2 we will get a is equal to 2q plus r am i right and what will happen here we will get 0 is less than r less than 2 correct now when 0 is less than r is not equal to r less than 2 what does that mean 0 is less than or equal to r less than 2 i will divide this into 2 okay r is greater than or equal to 0 and r is less than 2 that means can you say that r can be between 0 and 2 including 0 that is r can be 0 r can be 1 but r cannot be 2 because there is no equal to here this is not there so we can say that r is 0 and r is 1 right so take these as the possible scenarios here and substitute those in this equation here can we say that equation 1 is a is equal to 2q plus 0 because r can be 0 and r can be 1 that is the possibilities and the second equation can we say that a is equal to 2q plus 1 because 1 is also a possibility now he is say asking us to prove this that this equation is for even integer and this equation is for odd integer that's it and we here we have considered a as a positive integer so can we not say that this equation is applicable for even integer how do we say that what is even in your in other words what is an even integer that means it is divisible by 2 any number that is divided by 2 is an even integer so that means suppose you take a is here q is here what is the result we will see that is what will be happening when q is 1 we will get the answer as a and is a an even integer yes 2 is even so this is even what will happen if we take q as 2 in this equation this is for equation 1 
What will happen if we take Q as 2? We get A as 4. What will happen if we take Q as 3? We get A as 6. What will happen if we take Q as 4? We will get 8. By substituting these values in A is equal to 2Q. That means all these are even. So, we can conclude that A is equal to 2Q is that equation that satisfies for even integer. That means any positive even integer is of the form 2q because the only reason being it is divided by 2. Okay. In the same way, this is for even integer. In the same way, can we prove that any positive integer which is of the form 2q plus 1 is odd or not? Let's see that. I will take a is equal to 2q plus 1 as the equation. So, we get a is equal to 2q plus 1. So, using this equation, what will happen if you take q values and result? Okay. So, we can say that result q, if you take q as 1, what is a? 3. If you take q as 0, what is a? 1. If we take q as 2, what is a? 5. If we take q as 3, what is a? 7. That means, what is the result here? It is odd. So, that means, can we not conclude that a is equal to 2q plus 1 is applicable for all the odd integers and not even at all? For sure, because these cannot be divided by 2 and we are adding 1 to this equation. So, hence we can prove that this equation is that every positive even integer is of the form 2q and every positive odd integer is of the form 2q plus 1. Okay, so this is how we use Euclid's division lemma to prove this statement. Thus, we can say that any positive integer when divided by 2 the remainder is 0 and 1 and any positive integer can be of the form 2q and 2q plus 1 for some in where q is some integer. In the previous question, we have seen what happens when we divide any positive integer by 2. It will leave the remainder 0 and 1 and it is of the form 2q and 2q plus 1. In the same way, the concept that we have learned earlier can is applicable and can be extended to other integers as well. That is, what happens when you divide any positive integer by 3? Let's see that. And after this, you can easily apply this to 4, 5, 6, whatever, and whenever the question demands you to solve. Okay. So now let's see what happens when we divide any positive integer by 3. You know for a fact that a is equal to bq plus r and o is less than or equal to r less than b by Euclid's division lemma. Now, a is the dividend and here 3 is the divisor because we are trying to establish what happens when you divide any positive integer by 3 and here this is positive integer. a is positive integer. Now, a is equal to 3q plus r. Now, can I write this as 3? Yes, because b is 3 here. Now, I have told you this concept in the previous question. When you say 0 is less than or equal to or less than 3, that means can we conclude that r is greater than 0 and r is less than 3? That means r is equal to 0, r is equal to 1, r is equal to 2. But r is not equal to 3 because there is no equal to here. Right? So that means, can we write this as, can we get like three equations here? When R is, R is, when R is equal to 0 and this is when R is equal to 1 and this is when R is equal to 2. So, we can say that when any positive integer is divided by 3, then you will get the numbers in the form of 3q, 3q plus 1 and 3q plus 2. In the same way, we can say that if any positive integer is divided by 4, 
what will we get 0 less than or equal to r less than 4 so we get r is greater than or equal to 0 r r is less than 4 that is r is equal to 0 r is equal to 1 r is equal to 2 r is equal to 3 so that means we'll get how many equations when the divisor is 4 here we'll get 4q plus 0 4q plus 1 4q plus 2 4q plus 3 this entire concept whatever we have learnt in the first application can be extended to other numbers as well.